She is one of my favourite presenters ever. I'm not just really? saying that. Yeah, I've been a huge fan. Look, and Star of Strictly. It is Matt Vega. Hello, Matt. Good evening. Hello, hello. Good evening to you. Very happy to be here. Again? I mean, how many years have you been to Quite a few. Yeah, quite. How many awards have you won? Uh, I've got, well, I've got two myself. I'm very proud of them. Yes, 2001, 2002. Right, now for the special award. This award is in the gift of the Academy and is awarded in recognition of a fantastic body of work. To present it, someone who knows all about fantastic bodies, he's partnered with one on Strictly, where he's stunning us with his sambas and wowing us with his waltzes. That's nice. He's also the presenter of Country File and Secret Britain. And he couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> and he's a keen fan of rambling. As a farmer, he thinks of foxes as vermin. I work with Basil Brush, I tend to agree. Everybody, please welcome two-time BAFTA winner and somebody I personally look up to, Matt Baker. Hello, hello. Lovely to see you all. Now then, it is an artist's greatest ambition to have a career that is significant, lengthy and varied. And the recipient of this special award this evening has done exceptionally well on all three accounts. Now, he began his performing career as an actor in rep theatre, which soon led to roles in a succession of popular television dramas in the 60s, such as Dixon of Doc Green, Zed Cars, The Long Way Home and Doctor Who. But it was in 1964, as the BBC prepared to launch its second channel, that a young presenter heard about the programme that was being created aimed at under fives. He successfully auditioned and thus began a 21-year reign pride of preschool programming for a generation. With a combination of songs, dance, hyper-enthusiastic presenters, and who could forget, Humpty, Jemima, and Big Ted, Play School is, of course, a fond memory for anyone in the prime of life today. <laughs> no. Playaway followed and appearances in countless children's TV series such as Brick a Brack, Star Turn, On Safari, and Jack and Ori. He's narrated much-loved shows such as Trumpton and Camberwick Green. His iconic voice gave us catchphrases that are part of the collective consciousness. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And my first encounter with this very gentle man was quite a few years back when I was on Blue Peter and uh, we were filming The Quest. And uh, he was just about to go and do some more theatre and tour all around Britain and uh, he needed somewhere to stay in Durham. And we got talking, and to cut a long story short, he ended up staying with us at the farm. And it was an incredible experience to have such a legend in your home and to hear his anecdotes long into the night. And um, the bed and breakfast must have been all right because he came back the year after. And uh, he's been such a friend to our family uh, since then. But his career has spanned over 50 years, and recently he was named the country's best loved voice in children's television. So where better to look back at the highlights of this illustrious career than through the square window. Window, one, two, three, four. Ready to knock? Turn the lock, it's play school. Hello. It's our turn to be with you this week. I'm Judy. And I'm Brian. Well, that's a lovely bottle, isn't it? I wonder what we could do with that. Yes, that wasn't bad, was it? It was laughing time, and the tall giraffe lifted his head and began to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Hello. It's only me. Oh, dear me, look what I've done. In the early days, looking for presenters, we really tried to find a great range of people, but very, very early on, Brian applied and came, and he likes telling this story about how I gave him a cardboard box, and he sat in it, and I said to him, um, now go on a, an imaginary journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, well, uh, all right, let's go. Uh, so I got the oars, and I rode out, well, it was a lovely day. It was I, and I, once I got out there, you know, it was beautiful. Nobody about. There were a few, few, few little clouds scudding. And seagulls. Q. Percy Edwards. Seagulls. And he came back with a boot full of custard. 
and he got the job. With Brian, there was something very special, and um, there was no doubt one saw his charm from the beginning, and that lasted, and he seemed to be ageless. He never seemed to get any older in all those 21 years. I was always inspired by Brian because I thought he was a fantastic children's performer. He was very, very endearing to everybody, and not only to the children, but also I think because of the poor adults have to sit through these programs with their children. And I think they felt comfortable with Brian. Which of you likes birthday cake? Do you? Yeah. Well, there you are, there's some candles to put on your next one. <laughs> Do you all like Suffolk fun? Yeah. yeah? Well, I've only got one bit. Give it a lick and then pass it round, will you? <laughs> pew, pew, Barney McGrew, Tuffet, Dibble, Grub. Just the second. You, that he starts saying, you are five again. And you see it, and it's those figures, Gordon Murray's puppets and everything. You know, it was a kind of kids' TV perfect storm, Trumpton. All of the elements. Here is a box, a musical box, wound up and ready to play. But this box can hide a secret inside. Can you guess what is in it today? Even now, I, I just, that, that sense of anticipation. And you watch, and it's just the way, the way that the segmented top would slide out as it span. Who's coming out of the box? Is it going to be Windy Miller? Windy Miller, Windy Miller, sharper than a thorn. You couldn't get Windy Miller drunk now, and you couldn't have him walking past the blades of that windmill. You know, Gordon Murray found it quite funny that Windy would walk in and out, and these sails, there's an innocence to it. Pimpernel Petroleum is a bold, bad bus who doesn't care for travelling from Glasgow to Luss. Pop goes her engine, crunch go her gears, her passengers are sitting with their fingers in their ears. Pimpernel Petroleum loves to make a fuss, for Pimpernel Petroleum is a bold, bad bus. Putting on of costumes was no problem to him because, of course, in all his TV children and stuff, he'd always dressed up and was always in something new. He's a great exhibitionist, and I suppose, in a way, you know, he, he took to it like a duck to water. He didn't care what wigs we put him in or what costumes, he loved it. After three, I want everyone to say the magic Chinese word, Yakanori! <laughs> Ready? After three, one, two, three, Yakanori! <laughs> He was dependable, he was uh, so likeable, and uh, just a, a fantastic performer. I just feel incredibly lucky to have lived in an era where we had Brian Kent. <laughs> Dappled, he woke up one morning feeling very hungry. Oh, am I looking forward to my breakfast, he neighed. But I can't really. Uh, think of anyone more deserving than Brian for this uh, really very prestigious award. I just wish that you could just be very, very happy all the time and keep well and good. <laughs> this special award to the wonderful Brian Kant.
Thank you very much. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. When I became a man, I spake as a child, <laughs> I understood as a child, I thought as a child, and they paid me for it. Apologies to the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. I don't suppose they care. <laughs> How long have I got, I asked Lisa Prime. As long as you like, she said. So we could start by singing my hat, it has three corners. But we won't. Some years ago, at a foil's literary lunch, a speech given by the gin magnate, Sir Walter Gilby, went on for 90 minutes. A man sitting at the top table fell asleep, which annoyed Sir Walter somewhat. Oh, hang on. So he picked up the Toastmaster's mallet, struck the man on the head, and carried on talking. <laughs> the man looked up and said, I can still hear you, hit me again. <laughs> I shan't keep you that long, I'm hungry. <laughs> Just long enough to thank Matt for his kind words and presenting me with this wonderful award. Thanks to the rest of the team. Thank you to everyone I've ever worked with. What a jolly evening. I thank my five brilliant children, three of whom are with me tonight, as is my darling wife, Cherry, who has the task of looking after this shaky old fart. <laughs> and of course, huge thanks to BAFTA. Bless you. Thank you all. Oh, God. We're going to waltz off. <laughs>